So guys, today I've come down to Haven't Car Company to have a little cheeky look at what they've got in stock. Now, obviously, the X6 that's right there isn't going anywhere until the end of the year, but if I've got the opportunity to come down to a dealership and test drive a few cars, I'm gonna take it. So massive thank you to the guys at Haven't Car Company for letting me come down. We're gonna have a little play with some cars, but I'm gonna go around the forecourt, see what catches my eye, have a little chat with you guys, get in the comment section and tell me what you think of all the cars that I'm about to go through and the possibilities that I could modify these things, wrap them, all that sort of stuff. But to start with, the RS and the Transit behind me. The Transit is nice. Okay, so these two aren't actually for sale, but I wanted to start that transit. I'm actually gonna go and test drive that in a minute. It's not for sale, but I just want to drive one and see what it's like. So that video is definitely coming. The RS as well, beautiful car, but again, not for sale. This is Haven't Car Company's actual RS. It's really cool. And shout out to the Diamond Cross on the roof. <laughs> Rep in deep. But we're gonna go through all of their cars see what takes my fancy. Okay, starting off with a sort of oddball, really. This is a DSG Amarok. Now, bear with me on this one because I really like the way these things look. They look super, super cool. Big and bulky truck. You know, something that do not see on YouTube especially, but something a little bit different. I don't know what you could sort of do modified wise with these, but I do like the idea that this is DSG. It's the 180 model as well, so it's quite a high spec car. And it's got the leather, it's cool paint with the sort of brown. I mean, if we go up to it, look at the funny brown. Sort of like an old Porsche color, really. But really, really cool, bulky looking truck. Coming down the sides, nice alloy wheels with the side trims looking inside. Cup holder, we shout out cup holders, tinted windows in the back. The initial thing that I was talking about with this one was that it had size. It had the comfort at the front with, you know, a good DSG diesel engine. It's a twin turbo one as well, so it is the more powerful engine, but it has the size in the back for trade shows, you know, going up to car meets, all that sort of stuff. And it has the size, I like my big trucks. So this could be a competitor for the next whip. I know it's a very, very odd thing to have on this channel, but it is pretty cool. But let me know below. One to think about, because these, one of those trucks that you see a lot of them, but you don't see too many modified ones. So maybe that's something to think about. Big wheels, maybe lower it, livery. Could be pretty cool. Okay, a relatively oddball choice here. Something completely different, but still VW, is an Edition 35. Probably one of the most high spec Edition 35s I've ever seen. This has the reversing camera, the full lever interior, and this beautiful red paint job as well with sort of diamond cut fronted wheels. Looks really cool. Black mirrors in this as well, but I love the interior in this Edition 35s. Very, very nice. And again, a DSG, so it has the potential to be mapped and all that sort of business. Lovely back end on these as well with the twin tailpipes. Something that, again, I've never actually driven this shape, GTI, but it's something I've always really liked the look of. This one especially with the four doors, so it's a little bit easier, although I do like my two doors, don't get me wrong. This one, because of the high spec, makes it a competitor because I really like the look of one the price and two the tunability of these the tunability is fantastic and where it's a 35 it will hold its value in the long run after driving a fair few GTIs this is one of those things that again I want to drive but because it's sat on the forecourt it draws me into it because it's something that I've never experienced so to me this is a definite competitor I must admit going from the Amarok to this is a very different thing but this still has the bigger boot you know the back seats can go down it has the DSG engine it has the fun of a hot hatch as well so it covers all of those obviously the amarok is bigger diesel and all that sort of stuff but this ticks the hot hatch box okay so a very oddball car don't get me wrong but i've driven a big power red one of these and I absolutely loved it so this was one of those cars I wanted to pick out 
in the sort of lineup that I've got in front of me mainly because one it's a little bit different i don't see too many of them don't get me wrong it's not for everyone but i loved the seats the seats were probably one of the best bits let me just show you guys the vxr seats in these are absolutely beautiful again very strange thing to opt don't get me wrong out of this whole forecourt to come and talk about this car it's hybrid turboed you know it's Something a little bit different though, I wanted to just pick it out because I don't see too many of them, especially in white with the black roof. The bowler wheels that have been changed out with the Brembo calipers on front. It's a great package, these VXRs, don't get me wrong. You just do not see a lot of them on the road. Well, especially from where I'm from, I don't see many of them on the road. This sort of tickled my pickle a little bit because I love the shape of this GTC style. Big exhaust at the back as well. I've always liked this sort of letterbox exhaust at the back. But yeah, after driving one of these, you know, probably a few years ago now, I noticed how much fun they were, how cheap they'd got, and the fact that I didn't see many of them. So for me, it became a competitor because I liked the idea that no one else had one, and the seats really just blew me away. The main reasons, though, are the seats, the value, this one's got bowler wheels on it, and the fact that this one is hybrid turboed and is running 300 and 55 brake horsepower means that this is an absolute right. I, the one I drove was around that power and it was absolutely nuts to drive. So this for me is a definite contender. <laughs> and coming to a caddy van. I know a lot of people, it may not even make any sense, but this sort of ticks all the Amarok boxes, but it has the cool factor. Not that the Amaroks aren't cool, but this is seriously cool. So caddies for me are the quintessential smaller van that I would buy. So this has actually got the R-Line kit on it, splitter at the front, side skirts and that with a nice set of chunky, spoky wheels. Like, look at the spokes on these wheels, they're very nice. But this is something that a lot of people, especially out there, would be very interested in. This being a small wheelbase one as well means it's small enough to, you know, drive daily and put stuff in the back of, and it, it has that sort of character of being a little bit of fun, looks cool, but still is completely purposeful. The fact that I could take this to shows and stuff, but all, you know, the merch in the back would make a fantastic daily. With the fact that this is a smaller wheelbase one means that daily-wise, I could drive it around and it would be quite easy to drive on a daily basis. You could chuck loads of stuff in the back for shows. They look really cool. There's a big following for the caddies as well. A lot of people like them, especially this one as well. I love the sort of pokey stance at the back and it ticks a lot of boxes. I like the little lip spoiler as well. I mean, look at this little lip spoiler at the top. Coming down though, I literally noticed the interior. It's all diamond stitched. It ticks that box of having a really nice interior as well. So yeah, something that's sort of like the Amarok, but nothing like the Amarok. Something that's a little bit different in the way it looks and no one is really showing them off on YouTube and all that. It has the cool factor, I think. It doesn't tick the box at the Golf or the Astra would in excitement, but it's definitely got the cool factor. <laughs> Okay, bear with me, going straight off topic from those other cars, vans, trucks, to a Fiesta. Doesn't make any sense to some people, but here's the one very good reason why I wanted to conclude this. The amount of fun I've had in every ST Fiesta that I've driven, had the chance of being around, has been phenomenal. So I had to pick this one as the sort of last thought in my head. Now this is the reasoning. It has the hot hatch credentials, it has the excitement, it has the looks. Everybody loves these Fiestas and I totally see why I've driven enough of them to know how much fun they are. It has the possibility of putting the back seats down, could put a roof box on it if you really wanted to. It has the amount of durability on a daily basis to one, have fun and drive long distance. This one especially with the mods that have been done, Perrin Stage 2, so it's not running mad, mad power, but it's running enough power to really have fun in this. Airtech intercooler up front, it has all of the triple R composites, skirts at the side, splitter, it has these really Team Dynamics five spoke wheels, which I really like. Coming down the side, I love the blue paintwork as well, but the Recaro interior, you know, a lot of people on YouTube have these, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of content out there in 
and everybody that's come to my channel will know full well how many of these have been on the channel but it'd be quite nice to have an ownership experience with one of these sts considering how many i've actually driven in the past something very different again though going from 4x4 amarok to a van to a hot hatch and then a smaller hot hatch it's just something to think about though because although you can get a lot of durability and size out of all of the vans and the truck you can still get all of this in your hot hatches you can fold the seats down and get a lot in the back you can still have fun though and i think the fun level here especially is there whereas maybe in the amarok it wouldn't be there so it would just be a diesel daily driver sort of like the x6 has become although it's you know a little bit more exciting it's not going to be as exciting as this or that or that guys a little bit of a walk round of exactly what is down here at the moment i am test driving a few cars today which will be coming to the channel mainly for reviews but it's cars that i actually genuinely are interested in massive thank you to the guys at haven't car company for letting me come down have a little nose through their selection and just think of possibilities at the end of this year that x6 is going it is literally time for me to either jump in something bigger and more work orientated for shows traveling with stock all that sort of stuff or i jump into something completely different hot hatch wise yes it will still have the back seats that can go down you can still get merch in the back but it has the fun side so that's the hardest part is finding something that is fun but can still carry everything and don't get me wrong although the x6 is fun there's a lot more cars out there the hot hatch market especially has so much more potential than what i show through this channel you can drop the seats down you can put roof boxes on them it's having the right car so let me know in the comments what you think of any of the cars that i put on this video and what potentially these cars could meet for the channel if you're interested in seeing an amarok let me know below if you're interested in a fiesta let me know below because it's something that i really want to bring to the channel bringing something different is one of those things i always try and do so for my next car especially like that one which is an absolute monstrosity it has to be the same sort of thing it has to be weird and different so let me know below again thank you so much to the guys and Here's to my next car. We don't know what it is yet, but I have a lot of options and coming to see stuff in person is a really, really great idea. You get to understand, especially, what these cars have to offer, how they look in person and what mods you could do after and really what's out there for your money. You know, going to car dealerships and having just a good look round with a figure in mind of what you can spend is a great idea. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.